Hi, Dr. Reeves here, back for another talk about certain kinds of medications. That seems to be a popular topic. Today's video is about a drug called zonisamide, marketed in the United States as Zonagrin. So Zonagrin, or zonisamide, is used for a number of reasons. It's really approved in the United States for treatment of epilepsy, specifically for partial onset seizures or focal epilepsy or whatever term you want to use. Uh, it, but it actually does seem to work for a number of epilepsies that are not just partial onset focal epilepsies, uh, which is nice. But it also has found use, particularly in Japan, uh, with treatment of Parkinson's disease. It's not really used much for that in the United States, at least at this point, but it probably has a little bit of promise because the medication does kind of tweak some of the chemicals that are involved in the Parkinson's kinds of symptoms. Uh, there has been a little bit of use for zonisamide, uh, taking care of people who have frequent migraines, people who have nerve pain, and there is even a little research looking at using Zonagrin for uh, making weight loss a little bit easier, which in the United States is a big deal. Zonagrin comes in a number of pill strengths. Most frequently we wind up using the 100 milligram capsules. A lot of my patients are taking two or 300 milligrams total a day, although I do have some that are taking as much as 300 milligrams twice a day. I might even have one or two taking more, all of which to say your mileage may vary. We're all a little bit different. How much we need and how much we can tolerate it and how well we metabolize it is different from person to person. When you take a dose of Zonagrin, generally the literature says it takes about two to six hours for the medication to kind of reach a peak in your bloodstream. That's pushed out a little bit when you take the medication with food. The total amount that you absorb doesn't change though. So if you take it with food or without food, really it kind of doesn't matter. Let's talk about side effects of Zonagrin. I usually put them into kind of two buckets. One bucket is the side effects that are common to every seizure medication. If you take enough of any seizure medication, you get what I call the drunk, tired, and stupid, meaning your concentration is bad, your memory is bad, your balance is bad, you're sleepy, uh, you can't think as well. Uh, that's pretty common to every seizure medication. Zonisamide is not particularly bad in that kind of side effects. It's certainly not as bad as some of the other medications that we have used over the decades. But as I've said already, your mileage may vary. There are some people that just don't respond well to zonisamide or some other drug. We're all a little bit different. Uh, in general, the medication is um, pretty well tolerated in my experience, but you never know until you get on it and you see. Now, other side effects that we think about, uh, they often uh, take a while to build up because the medicine has a very long, what we call a long half-life, meaning the amount of time that the medicine kind of hangs around your bloodstream after you take a dose is really long. And that means when you start the medication or when you make a change in the dose, it takes quite a long time, like 10, 12, 13 days for the new steady state level to uh, kind of settle in. So when you start the medication, you don't tend to change the dose like every day or two, like it might be with some other medications. Um, now, rarely the medication can cause a, a generalized inflammation kind of problem that can affect, uh, you know, liver or, or, or skin and, and, and uh, that kind of stuff. It's, it's pretty uncommon. Like, I, I've never seen it in all the patients I've used zonisamide with. Um, there are, the more things, the more common things we worry about is that maybe up to 4% of people might have a problem with kidney stones on the medication. And it has to do with part of its function with uh, 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 an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase, if you're that interested. Um, I've had a couple of people who've developed kidney stones on the medication, but not a lot, but it is something to be aware of. Any seizure medication is said to increase your risk of suicidal thinking. Um, that can be anywhere from early on in the medicine to you've been on it for weeks and months. Uh, I have not seen a lot of that with zonisamide personally, but it can occur. The um, uh, other side effect or that some people worry about quite a bit it has to do with pregnancy. And if a woman gets pregnant on zonisamide, sort of what's the risk? Now, the best 
data that we have in the U.S. comes from a certain pregnancy registry. And it, there's not a huge number of women who've had pregnancies on zonisamide, but uh, la at the last publication, there are about 166. So the, the confidence intervals, you know, the range of concern about uh, bad effects on the baby is a little bit broader than we'd like. But if you kind of look at the data, it actually looks really pretty good. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the number that they've come up with so far, again, it's early, the number they've come up with so far is not really particularly different from the rate of having problems with the baby uh, when the woman isn't taking any seizure medication. So maybe over the course of the months, years, decades, it'll settle out that we get a, a better idea what the exact percentage uh, of problems is, but it's probably not going to be terribly high because it's had enough time to already get there. Um, there is a, 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 a change called a, a metabolic acidosis uh, that can occur on the medication. The symptoms are kind of vague, so people fatigue and kind of maybe hyperventilating a little bit. And it has to do with the acid-base balance shifting in the blood. Again, it gets back to that enzyme that I mentioned earlier. Um, not terribly common, apparently, but it's worth thinking about. And then um, decreased sweating is something that can occur on the medication. I've had maybe a couple of patients that noticed that. One I can think of noticed it for a few weeks to a month or so, and then it seemed to resolve. I had another person where it just sort of seemed to persist. Um, that it, I guess would be a particular problem if somebody was working in hot environments or lived in a place where it was really quite hot and humid and was hard to lose body heat. So, of course, there are other less common uh, side effects or more severe side effects that uh, we don't see very much. Everybody wants to know, well, what's this drug going to do to me? And the answer always is, well, we can tell you what it does in 100 people or 1,000 people, but what you really want to know is what does it do in one person, and the statistics don't really answer that as well. They tell you about your risk, but they don't really tell you about your particular future. So that's a quick breeze through some of the more common and some of the less common side effects that you want to know about. Thanks for watching this far, and thank you to Miss Quinn, who was our camera girl today, and steadily held the camera as best she could. Peace out.